Hi, Jack Rabbit here. Now we're going to um, continue the uh, multi-material upgrade to this project. And um, the first thing I'd like to do is that we should um, go to the se next section, which is 2B in the manual. MK3S slash MK2.5S extruder disassembly. So let's have a little look at that. So here we go. So this is our next section. So what I thought is that we go through the manual steps. Um, a little bit commenting here and there and then we will do the same procedures on the printer and then I will refer back to the step in the manual as appropriate. And um, it's important not to take next from introduction because then you will end up in the incorrect section. So make sure you go directly to the relevant section related to your printer. Oh, okay. There are some general things which I already went over in the previous, uh, but you know, just to repeat again, uh, make sure the printer's unplugged. Um, I think that's um, a very good thing to do. And um, reposition the X axis to an irrelevant height so that you can actually gain access to it. Okay, so the objective of this basic instruction is that they have the infrared sensor for the filament um, is installed at the top here and it needs to actually be repositioned into a new position so the cable needs to be pulled out. So that's the whole objective of this long instruction is just to be able to pull out enough cable to be able to move it to a new position. So we have to just have to um, take away the um, zip file, zip uh, holding the cable. We need to open up the electronics box, free up the cable, going to the hot end. Uh, and then we need to, in the electronics box we need to um, unplug the cable. And then sadly enough we need to release this, the back the x-axis back plate. I don't and I mean in the instruction it will say should you remove the screw or should you just loosen it. And we, I will do, repeat that when we're doing the printer to, to actually um, show. In some cases it's actually a little bit vague. But we'll see. We'll adapt. Uh, FS cover and hot end fan disassembly so we need to yeah, we need to take away the fan, we need to release these screws. We need to um, release the idler to remove the filament sensor. So, and then we need to release the hot end by the releasing the um, hidden screws. We need to take away this ball mechanism that's on top of the extruder. Release some more screws. And then we need to disassemble the extruder idler. <laughs> no, we don't get any hard bush yet. <laughs> because we need to make sure we can actually pull out enough of this cable. It's, it's actually sad they don't say specifically how many centimeters of cable you need to get pulled through, but uh, there will be the assembly next, so then I suggest, um, yeah, you just li li you just pull it as much as one can diagnose from this picture and then uh, leave it like this, and then we will um, continue with the next step. That's pretty much it now. I think we can just um, start with the printer then. So here we go. So back to the, on the printer now and um, step one we've pretty much done. 
um, has been commented previously. So I'm assuming that done. So this is the step two, releasing the cable bundle. And here we need to do the reverse order. Ascend. Now we need to open the cover. And that's a screw over here on the other side. Just the middle one just there. Cable bundle. Uh, shit. Oops. No, oh, that's. Oh, access the screw. sure that there's no zip ties or anything holding filament sensor and it's this cable so that looks okay that one nearly fell out. <laughs> that wasn't much force though. And then we just make sure that it comes up to this level. I would actually like to ah, okay that was the that was that holding it there. So we just leave it like very loose. Okay, and um, well, the instructions had it in a bit of a different order, but I thought I'd just complete the control box activities. But and now we have to loosen up the cable bundle here. So I have an extra zip that I put in, not in the instruct original instructions. I'll take that away also. And then we have to cut all these. Ah, I don't like this one. That's the way it has to be done. that I don't like using I'm using snippers closely even if it's got a protective sheath and that one instinctively doesn't want to work with snippers around good so let's try and So that's freed up the um, filament sensor wire to be extracted through here to get the extra length on needs in the whole assembly. Okay, step four, X carriage back disassembly. So what we need to do is to um, 
release these screws. There's a difference between <laughs> in the instruction they're trying to sort of say in some cases you're supposed to loosen a screw and, and then they say to leave these in the print but I'm not going to leave them in the print. They're going to fall down somewhere and they're going to get lost so I am going to ignore the instructions and I'm going to, to release these screws and I am going to put them on the side because there's just too much of a risk that they're going to fall down in my opinion. So. Center screw. Okay, maybe we could leave that one in. That doesn't seem to want to fall out so much as the other one. And it's going to be the first screw to be screwed back in again. Oh, I think I want to save this one and not have it hanging in the print. And then we're supposed to move the back oh, so that it has about um, what did it say? one centimeter clearance so that we can get up the cable. Yeah, exactly, because it goes through there. I don't know if one can see it. No, oh, but you can see it very well. Okay. And it comes on this side and then it goes around. That's so much in the bundle, I can't even really see where it is. Oh, but there I can see it coming from underneath at least. So it ends up on, on this side. Okay. So this will be um, step five, film on sensor cover and hot end fan disassembly. So let's try and understand. Okay, so we need to take this one cover away and it's going to be replaced. And I'm assuming we will reuse the screw. It's just 10 millimeter standard screws, so I'll just put it with the and kind of collecting the hardware here. So, and then we need to release the screw holding the idler. Release it. I'm assuming we should screw it until it actually doesn't hold anything anymore. the IR sensor out. Oops, and then we need a, a smaller Allen wrench for that. It's that one. Well, actually I have a bit also for it. That was the one I was using. Well, turns out not to be. Maybe I did use the Allen wrench though. Okay, let's continue with this one then. Mm. 
fully lift it out and we should unplug it and we should keep it okay so that's done now here we see that it's definitely not um, long enough as indicated in the picture oh okay what's next so then we need to loosen what do they call the term? Release is the term. Uh, and then there are two screws in here, in, in here on the front of the extruder. And we need to release, not take out. So how many turns? Just a few turns. Okay. To make a half a centimeter go. Things that require a little bit more than more than uh, a few turns. Okay, right. No, let's not dally with that. And then we should release and remove all screws holding them. the hot pan. Let's see if I have to. No. <laughs> this really feels so, uh, awful since I just built this. But anyway, oh, it's ah, I think it's going to be worth it. So that was actually a different length, that screw. Yes, because the hot end, hot, hot end fan has three screws of one length. And one that's not the same length, so I think we should just point that out. It'll probably be mentioned in the next instruction, but anyway, let's just do a reminder here. But that's the fan screws. Just for my own sake also, so double remember that. Okay, so that's out. Okay, so what are we looking at? Extruder. Uh, step six: extruder body release. And then we need to actually take the special Allen wrench, which is actually included also with the tool set for um, for the upgrade. I have it left over from a printer installation. And then where are we supposed to re uh, and release it slightly a few turns are enough for our goal is to keep the parts connected. So that's in there. Very tricky. Two, three. And then on the other side there's also in the same place. On the other side. There is also the same similar screw. Loosen that up also. So, like that. Okay, and then what loosen. will be uh, step seven extruder idler disassembly so uh, we need to release and remove this 
should be loosened or not taken out. How much? Rele uh, release the other end. Just slight to create a gap between the parts. I want to keep the entire extruder together. So. here, which has a steel ball in it, doesn't seem to want to come, okay, didn't think there was anything to hold that, because now it's the screws, ah, there, it's actually a bit tight that, Okay, that is strange. Take it from the back first. I do know there's a steel ball in there, so I wonder if the steel ball is jamming it. Okay, I'll have to try and fiddle with that for a while. Yeah, that was actually in there quite tightly, so that's, that's the one that contains the steel ball. That's the assembly to take out. Okay, what's next? Okay, now we need to um, disassemble the idler. Maybe we should... Um, here and try and push out the pin. See if we can have a bigger pitch. And one should be careful not to not to damage. Oops, that's hard in there, isn't it? Let's see. the bearings. So oh, since there are bearings in there though, <laughs> that was not that fun. I don't want to damage the, ah, good, put the axle out. So I'm just going to try and put that axle back in like that so we can Stay like that. So, and then let's see. So now we're there at step eight. Oh, I didn't mention it. And now it's no Haribo time because now we need to uh, 
pull the cable out. So um, I'm going to try and get that fixed. And um, there's really no point in showing much of it because it's just going to be fiddling with the cable and try not to pull too much. And um, get a, I'm going to take out approximately that amount of clearance. So I don't know what that is, maybe two centimeters, three. But I'll probably leave a bit extra, so I'll try and evaluate how, you know, based on the picture, how much distance that is. Because it doesn't actually say how much one should um, pull it out. So, um, we'll get on to that. Okay, actually, I think I have one hint I could give, and that's to take away the sock back to about here, and here's the actual, um, as you see, it's the same color coding. I hope it will show well enough in the camera. It does not really doesn't need an exact picture, but it was quite easy to um, pull more, more cable through from the, and there's lots left in the, like, in here, in the electronics box. So actually I think I I will um, yeah, try and pull a region. Let's see. Oh ooh, wow. Look at that. I think I'll actually want to organize some um, minicam picture of this. Okay, so here's the hopefully a better mini cam. See, I can just looks like I can just pull it through the channel like that. So and then we just pull some more out of the electronics box. As I said, there's quite a lot to be able to pull through. Oh, oh I think that's probably too much. I wonder if it is too much. Oh, I wish. Why didn't they say, like, how many centimeters or something? So it would have made it much easier to make it. So I will just evaluate how much I'll leave, leave. Now that I can adjust it so well. So just to try and evaluate how much I will actually leave there. I would tend to go for it including too much and too little because then they're probably going to ask for us to screw it all together. So, let's see. Okay, so if I like have it that much. We take a non-technical measure here. So that will be like four centimeters. And so when I cover it with my thumb, as in the picture, then I think it's about the same amount of cable. I have. So I'm hoping that's going to be that's going to be enough. But it was relatively easy to adjust. So now I'm just going to pull a little bit back into the, the electronics box. I think I can do that. Yep, took the slack back into the electronics box. Well, that seemed to work out fine. Okay, so that um, we came to the end of this section. I think we didn't, or nothing went really horribly wrong yet, so, so the next, um, the next stage will be to, um, put the additions in and then put it all back together again. But well, anyway, that will be in another video, so if you found this interesting or helpful, consider subscribing, um, hit the bell icon to be notified of more there will be more. Uh, inform others if this is ongoing, maybe they'll get some help from it. And enjoy building. So, see you in the next one.